Hey guys, good evening. All right, so while Pratik joins us back, uh, I'll just run you guys through all of today's market action. So, um, it was a bit of a positive day. We did recover from the lows to end slightly in the green. Uh, mid caps and small caps, they did uh, better than Nifty and Sensex, I would rather say, and the advanced decline ratio was split evenly. Most sectors did close higher, but then uh, the gains were muted. IT and FMCG were the main sources of strength, and we'll discuss why FMCG stocks were up to 2.5%, but metals, they were down 4% and, are, and hit a three-month low. That's definitely a big negative. Adani Group stocks, uh, they continue to remain under pressure. Adani Enterprises was down about 25% today after they called off uh, their FPO. Adani Green and Adani Transmission, they were also locked in a 10% lower circuit. Besides that, uh, Britannia was up uh, 5%, was a top gainer on Nifty on blockbuster Q3 results. Um, and I guess we have Pratik. In hello, hello, my check, my check. Is this better? Um, still about the same, but <laughs> I think we'll have to work with this. Oh, dude, this is not good. Can everyone listening give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down based on... Actually, it's getting worse life? now. It's worse than before. Uh, Swati is saying thumbs up. I can... Anyone else gives a thumbs up, guys? That would be really nice. And then we'll begin. All right. I guess we'll... I guess we'll go ahead with this. We'll, we'll have to work with it. Uh, okay, Rajesh says it's okay. Anyone else? Can everyone give a thumbs up if it's okay? Is this better? Yeah. No, I feel like this is a Zoom call. This shouldn't be happening. This shouldn't be happening in a Twitter space. <laughs> yeah, I mean, lately Twitter spaces haven't been that great. Uh, that's something we've been wanting for Elon Musk to fix first up, but uh, yeah, it's a bit of a pain. Okay, so should we continue? What do you want to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's go ahead with it. It's okay. I, I hope it gets better over the course of the uh, session. Okay, cool. Then, uh, dude, Yash, I have like five or ten things that uh, people are likely hmm. not to know. Um, and they've probably not read about the budget. So, I was thinking instead of talking about ki bhaiya, budget ne itna kharcha kar diya, utna kharcha kar diya, this is the capex. Uh, we should maybe talk about the stuff that, you know, people would like to find interesting. The interesting stuff only. Does that sound good? Yep. 100%. Um, so, as you probably know, I think one of the interesting ways to listen about, listen to the budget is basically this. Not if 10,000 crores was allocated or 11,000 crores. I think what's interesting is how the government is thinking about the future of the country. And unke dimag mein kya chal rahe? that's what the budget tells us, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, what was interesting about the um, the entire budget was that this was in the middle of a pandemic. They had the pandemic to account for. There was a war between Russia and Ukraine. There were sanctions west of Russia. There was a slowdown recession in the major parts of the world. There was inflation rising, interest rates, capital outflow. And within that, Nirmala Ma'am had to present the budget. Is the sound better, Yash? Um, no, it's all, it's still the same, but it's audible. It's just like the volume is a bit low, uh, but it's not that bad enough. Like, I, I can figure out what you're trying to say. Oh, dude, is it that? <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Can e everyone give a react, maybe like a thumbs up if it's okay, so I know that this is working. I guess something is better than nothing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, wh wh what do you want to start with first, Yash? Um, let me just like ask you what your high level take is. Are you happy with the budget? Are you sad? Are you content with it? Uh, what were your expectations going into it? Were they met? Was there something missing? Because we will discuss what came in the budget anyways, but <laughs> just your, you know, initial thoughts. Yeah, I mean, very simple. I think it was a safe budget. Um, I'm sad, of course, they didn't do much for, much for education. They actually didn't do much for startups either. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but they did a lot of new things for different stratas of society that I've never heard in a budget before, which I thought was very interesting. So I think we should talk about that uh, as well today. Yeah, yeah. So go ahead with it. Let's let's begin with that first. 
So I think Pele was the tax benefits. You want to skip this part? I think everyone wanted to know between seven lakhs. Seven lakhs is this, and it still says three to six lakhs. There's five percent. Six to nine lakhs. There's ten percent. So, uh, do you think there's a confusion regarding the tax lab, or should we skip this part? Um, I think not so much with the tax lab, but I think people weren't too sure which one to pick, and I think there was confusion with understanding that the changes were mostly for the new tax regime. and a lot of people are at, in fact the majority still you know follows the old regime where they still use all the standard uh, all the deductions yeah so i think i'll just say this i'll oversimplify it in two lines uh, basically hmm. it's this right if you want 3 to 6 lakhs you're taxed at 5% 6 to 9 lakhs you're taxed at 7 10% let's say your income is 7 lakh rupees uh, hmm. you will have to pay that 10% 70000 rupees but but now here's the but once you file Uh, the ITR that money will be refunded to you, so uh, you're actually not taxed that ten percent up to seven lakhs. Uh, you will actually get a rebate back. Now the question is, if you refund it, then why are you charging that ten percent anyway? Um, and the simple answer is, uh, the government wants everyone to move to the new tax regime. That's why they're doing it. Uh, so that's all that, that is. Got it. Um, um, I so I yeah, like I, to. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'll I'll jump in and I'll talk a bit about the capex angle. So you know we we've, we've been talking about how uh, India has been like this beacon of hope amidst all this global uncertainty, and the budget focus was primarily on stimulating growth and consumption. And uh, government capex is the biggest way, and we all know that infrastructure is extremely important uh, for connecting people, driving businesses. They're essentially. uh you know the engines of growth and development so when a government goes ahead and invests in you know infrastructure projects it creates more jobs and income for people who in turn have more money to spend on other things generating uh more jobs and income for other people in this process now mm. this essentially this whole chain reaction in economics uh people call it as the multiplier effect and uh we've seen over the past several years that the government has been pouring massive investments uh to upgrade Uh, and modernize uh, our our infrastructure, and this year that number stands at about ten lakh crores, which is thirty three percent higher than the previous year. Now this will be used again, like I said, to build new roads, homes, dams, and other projects. Uh, this is a this is a big positive for a whole host of sectors like uh, like cement, capital goods, engineering, construction, even banks who would be lending to people who build. So. obviously that's uh, one one of the biggest uh, aspects of the budget what what correct, else correct. Uh, did you find interesting pradeep isme kuch interesting nikalte hain i think the interesting thing was this right um one was they have a new ministry for cooperatives i thought that is very nice so jaise amul cooperative hai uh, milka cooperative hai the government hmm. sort of really didn't do anything special for them ever but now they have a new ministry looking after cooperatives this basically tells us government ko lagta hai cooperatives is a good thing and now it's part of the budget so uh they're thinking in that direction um and speaking about cooperatives another interesting thing was the decentralized storage system for farmers you probably heard this yash but i thought this was very interesting ki sabse bada problem in india mein hai ki kheti to ho jati hai harvesting bhi ho jata hai but the storage system that we have isn't amazing i don't know if you've uh, uh read about this that कितना गेहूं एक्सेट्रा खराब हो जाता बिकॉज द स्टोरेज वॉज इन गुड राइट जस्ट इट रॉट्स सो नाउ दिस्टम विच मीन इफ अ फार्मर ट्रांसपोर्ट इज ग्रेन रियली रियली फार अवे नाउ बिकॉज द सेंट्रलाइजेशन ऑफ सर्टन प्लेसेज विल बी डिसेंट्रलाइज एक्चुअली टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू मेड डिसेंट्रलाइज द बैड वर्ड बट हियर वी मीन इट इन टर्म्स ऑफ स्टोरिंग फार्मर का क्रॉप and not online ftx decentralization <laughs> um so 2500 crores has been allocated uh, just for the storage of crop in a decentralized manner and why decentralized matters is because you can transport it very easily and storage becomes better so that's actually really very nice thing got it anything else that stood out yeah. for you yeah yeah i think two three things over here uh what hmm. is see in um uh, If you notice in budgets, me na, you never notice them talking about disease. ऐसा होता नहीं है. You don't talk about disease hmm. control etc. in a budget. At least I don't remember. 
but this time for the first time i i heard them saying sickle cell anemia jo hai and vasant explained this to me ki red blood cells jo hote hain human body mein wo they are oval but it be, uh, but in a certain kind of disease it looks like a sickle it becomes like a rod um and this is Got very it. common and it's really uh, people die at age like 30 35 their max life lifespan becomes very less so uh, the budget said ki we want to eliminate this by 2040 i thought that's very interesting they're thinking about disease as well uh, ki eliminate karna hai isko by the year 2040 they didn't specify how but it's nice that they're thinking of that right yeah, yeah. absolutely i'll i'll tell you one more thing yash i found that mm-hmm. is interesting remember in the start we said ki uh, they're talking about uh, they they're taking care of different strata of society yeah so um, imagine this right uh, the prisoners inside prison there are rich prisoners there are medium prisoners and there are very very poor prisoners right Now yeah i was prisoners... really surprised with this statement <laughs> wo iska iska matlab kya hota hai rich prisoners poor prisoners kya hota hai और अगर जेल में भी रिच और पुअर है तो इसका क्लासिफिकेशन कैसे होता है या दैट्स एक्चुअली अ गुड क्वेश्चन आई होप इट्स नॉट मिसयूज्ड बट दिस इज एक्चुअली अ जेन्युइन रियल प्रॉब्लम पीपल इन प्रिजन समटाइम्स डोंट हैव इतना भी पैसा कि दे कैन गिव अ बेल ऑफ 10000 20000 एंड लीव सम ऑफ देम कैन लिटरली पे द बेल अमाउंट एंड लीव द प्रिजन बट दे हैव नो सोर्स ऑफ इनकम नाउ आई डोंट नो हाउ वेदर दैट्स अ गुड क्वेश्चन क्लासिफाई कैसे करेंगे ये बहुत सही क्वेश्चन है बट अज्यूमिंग दे आर एबल टू क्लासिफाई इट the central government will pay for that bail and let them out so i thought okay. that was interesting <laughs> what are your thoughts on that i don't know i was, like i said i was you know really so surprised about hearing this in the first place mujhe pata hi nahi tha aisa concept bhi hota hai ke there are there are rich prisoners and there are poor prisoners but I mean, it's good to see that you know poor people can also <laughs> be in prison <laughs> <laughs> it, it, that is generally the assumption right that most of the times prisoners like prisoners are poor only because that is essentially the motive to commit crime like i know this is going to be mm-hmm. very serious and away from our topic of discussing mm-hmm. about budget but mm-hmm. why would a, a rich person commits a different kind of a fraud or a scam it, it does not tend to go to the jail to wo hum aaj discuss nahi karne wale but coming back to the budget and you mentioned about taxation so main thoda taxation ke line mein hi continue karunga so ha obviously you know how taxation works and the government giving this benefit to tax payers tax payers gives uh, additional room for consumption growth direct nahi hai indirectly hota hai ki you know you end up paying less money in taxes to the government so that means people and businesses have more money to spend assuming they are not very thrifty and going to save Uh, but generally speaking uh, you know if you have more money in the hand you'll end up spending more which will drive demand and growth so consumption uh, basket ke liye generally ye achhi achhi news hoti hai but within the consumption basket there's one stock which is uh, extremely popular uh, amongst all the retail investors that is itc uske <laughs> related ek 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 news bhi aayi thi that the government has uh, increased uh the natural calamity cess or something on uh, uh on tobacco products by about 16% uh initial reaction was very bad stock fell 5% but as uh, people understood and the experts got a hang of this iska basic calculation ye tha ki सिगरेट के कॉस्ट में सेस का पार्ट इज जस्ट अबाउट टेन परसेंट सो ये जो सिक्सटीन परसेंट इंक्रीज गवर्नमेंट ने बजट में अनाउंस किया था इसका नेट नेट इम्पैक्ट ऑन प्राइजेस शुड नॉट बी मोर देन वन टू टू परसेंट और दो परसेंट अठारह रुपए की सिगरेट पे इज थर्टी सिक्स पैसे which is which does wow. not amount to a lot so all those you know whatsapp forwards that we were seeing ke paytm par ab sabse popular transaction 18 ke jagah pe 20 ho jayega <laughs> would, would not be the case unless obviously itc decides to take a price hike sometime in the future but not because of taxation purposes could be because uh, of down to inflation now tax zyada nahi bada iska ye matlab bhi hai ki log zyada cigarette phookenge ऐसा कहीं पे भी लिखा नहीं है कि यू नो इफ प्राइसेस आर स्टेबल देन पीपल स्मोक मोर दो तीन खुली सिगरेट पीने वाले एक पूरा डब्बा नहीं उड़ा देंगे बट यू नीड टू सी इट इन कॉन्टेक्स्ट दैट व्हेन एवरीथिंग अराउंड यू इज गेटिंग सो एक्सपेंसिव यू नो बीच में सब मीम चल रहे थे दैट एग प्राइसेस हैड ब्लोन अप इन द वेस्ट लास्ट ईयर इट वाज लंबर एंड यू नो एफएमसीजी कंपनीज दे डू ऑल दीस स्नीकी थिंग्स वेयर यू नो देयर रॉ मटेरियल प्राइसेस आर गोइंग अप सो दे रिड्यूस द ग्रैमेज 
or the packaging so oh, you wow. don't realize it but your same 10 rupee ka you know biscuit or whatever has fewer biscuits in it or they are thinner <laughs> you know all those kind of things so in that context wo ek sentimental overhang tha going into the budget last teen saal se government ne usme koi koi increase ya koi chhed chhad nahi ki thi so people were hoping ki ye saal bhi na ho so initial reaction thoda negative tha but then it reversed back knowing that it is not a significant enough increase and isse business par impact nahi hoga maybe you know agle saal tak to i hmm. i think yes uh, the reason people buy cigarettes right is completely it has nothing to do with price <laughs> and everything yeah. to do with that it's not allowed you know uh, the more you make it that's why it's called sin tax and sin products right like yeah. the more you say you can't have it the more i want it you know <laughs> and that's the reason why people <laughs> people take it like my first reaction was yeah tax is ka double kar dena chahiye but people's consumption is not going down Uh, so I I wonder what way would they actually bring um, cigarette consumption down? If you look at Philip Morris, which is uh, a cigarette brand globally, humongous, humongous. You you have data from 1920s, dude, and prices just keep going up, and so does the stock price. So no tension in here. Thoda aage chalte hain. Yeah, and I mean, like, see, people can always discuss that you know it's a dying industry. Har saal itne log. सिगरेट पीने के वजह से यू नो दे डाई बट दैट्स अ डिस्कशन फॉर अ होल अनदर डे द पॉइंट बीइंग ओवर हियर विद आईटीसी इन पर्टिकुलर इज दैट इट वाजंट अ सिग्निफिकेंट अनफ इंक्रीज एंड देन वी सॉ अ पुल बैक एंड यस्टरडे के लो से द स्टॉक इज अप ऑलमोस्ट 15 20% एंड एंड इट वेंट ऑन टू हिट अ न्यू ऑल टाइम हाई टुडे सो विद इन एफएमसीजी आईटीसी दिस वाज अ बिग ट्रिगर फॉर फॉर देम इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर की तरफ तो यहाँ पे दे पुट 10,000 करोड़ एवरी ईयर टू बी स्पेंड ऑन अर्बन सेक्टर टू बी ऑनेस्ट यार यू नो हियरिंग सच लार्ज नंबर्स आई डोंट थिंक द आम आदमी कैन अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट दैट मींस तो इसमें से आई हैव फोर इंटरेस्टिंग स्टोरीज मैं बताऊं यश इंटरेस्टिंग स्टोरीज ओके तो फर्स्ट इज हैव यू सीन दोस वीडियोस वेयर अ मैन गोस इनसाइड अ अ मैन होल क्लीन्स द स्लज एंड देन कम्स आउट Have you ever? Did you know this that all sewers are, are cleaned by a man going inside who cleans it, apne hato se. This is where you, human feces exists, right? Um, and it's done by humans. It's human scavenge scavenging. This is a legit job, and this is terrible, right? Because it is exposing humans to really really bad things. So it was very nice to see that the government has the sludging of sewer machines, which they will now uh, put in place to actually. Uh, hopefully remove manual human scavenging uh, from these sewers so i think that was interesting wow. there there was one there was one startup on the same topic which had come on shark tank also oh right i'm not right. sure if you watch it by the way just just saying no no i do i do i love fiction <laughs> no, i'm joking <laughs> actually aisa i don't think real life mein aisa hota hai but yeah it's nice to see it in a reality show uh, format but yeah yeah i i remember what you're talking about that that was a cool cool product got it anything else uh, you want to discuss before we again you know move forward us towards a more market related conversation yeah i think uh, there was something interesting you know um that there are lab grown diamonds uh, grown in a lab right so if anyone out here is looking to propose Uh, give me a thumbs up right now or give some reaction i'm looking i can see adwait rai baba rajesh all these people here um, ashish deepak uh, give, give a thumbs up right so if you're looking to propose and you got to buy a diamond ring uh, india will now give five year grants to people with just business plans okay this is a slide deck on google and governments will give you a grant so you can do lab grown diamonds currently just done by china uh, but will be done by um, and and the government's promoting it so i thought that was damn interesting ki the value of a diamond is not that it's rare because it can be literally lab grown it's because of the value we ascribe to it because we think it's important so i think that's that's interesting too um let's talk about the let, let's talk about the things that got expensive and cheaper 
बिकॉज आई थिंक लॉर्ड ऑफ पीपल वॉन्ट टू नो के भाई बजट हो गया हजारों करोड़ लाखों करोड़ गवर्नमेंट स्पेंड करी है बट द कॉमन मैन रियली जस्ट वॉन्ट्स टू नो वॉट विल हैपन टू हिज डे टू डे बजट इन स्टेड ऑफ द होल कंट्रीज बजट राइट दैट दैट मेक्स सेंस वेल पहली बात तो देखो इवन इफ समथिंग बिकम्स एक्सपेंसिव इन चीपर आपकी सैलरी बाय द एंड ऑफ द मंथ विल नॉट विल नॉट विल फिनिश एनीवे सो आई डोंट थिंक द बजट मैटर्स द प्रॉब्लम इज योर स्पेंडिंग हैबिट्स एंड योर सेविंग हैबिट्स बट कार्स गेट चीपर कार्स विल गेट चीपर कैमरा लेंसेस विल गेट चीपर मोबाइल लेंसेस गेट चीपर डोंट आस्क मी हाउ मच आई लिटरली हैव अ लिस्ट इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू दैट आई एम फ्रीक्वेंट रीडिंग बट दीस थिंग्स विल गेट चीपर सिगरेट्स एंड सिल्वर विल गेट एक्सपेंसिव um and imported ev vehicles will get expensive um so yeah yeah let's stick with the ev angle because i know a lot of people have interest in auto sector and uh, ev is obviously is one of the most uh, trending spaces uh, in 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 the budget as well so again there are a lot of uh, indirect uh, benefits or tax proposals to boost uh, green mobility uh, sabse pehle to jo fame policy hai f a m e उसके अंडर द गवर्नमेंट गिव्स टैक्स इंसेंटिव्स टू बूस्ट ईवी प्रोडक्शन दैट हैज गॉन अप ओवर 5000 क्रोर्स दैट वाज अ हेल्दी 30% प्लस सॉर्ट ऑफ अ जंप ओवर द प्रीवियस ईयर ऑन टॉप ऑफ दैट जो भी पार्ट्स और मशीन्स यूज होते हैं टू मैन्युफैक्चर लिथियम आयन बैटरीज व्हिच आर अगेन यूज्ड इन इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स एंड लॉट ऑफ अदर मशीन्स और इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एज़ वेल उसके ऊपर दे हैव एक्सटेंडेड द कस्टम ड्यूटी एग्जेम्पशन so i was reading through a lot of brokerage reports this is going to be positive for a whole host of auto oems and uh, uh, auto ancillary stocks uh, hdfc securities uh, is bullish on tata motors tvs mm. sona blw mm. and uh, mm. even xi industry any any auto stocks uh, pratik that you you'd like to discuss i have no clue man if you can ask, if you can give the name we can maybe towards the end we can go to the entire sector uh if that's fine okay um okay yeah, uh, cool i also want to give a shout out to i can see advait pelipu who is a finance writer at morning contact say love your work advait so uh thanks for joining dude <laughs> <laughs> he was there with us yesterday too for uh, the adani spaces and that's the next uh, topic that we are going to discuss about uh adani you know it really happens that a news of this magnitude comes that it overshadows even the budget and that is yeah. what is happening right now with this whole uh, adani hindenburg drama uh, i won't yeah. go too much into detail if you guys want to hear about it go ahead and check out our twitter spaces yesterday uh, it will be somewhere on our timeline frankly but uh, just to give a very very short summary essentially last week this time the uh, hindenburg came out with a report where they accused them of serious corporate governance issues high debt and uh, stock manipulation stock price manipulation uske baad there's been a war of words sort of going on between the two of them and the report came at a time when uh, dani enterprises was coming out with their fpo which got fully subscribed on the final day but uh, they had to eventually go ahead and call it off so that announcement came yesterday through exchange mm. notification and then for the past two days adani enterprises has been falling 25 30% and it's well below the fpo price any which way so that's the very quick summary of this whole drama pratik what is your uh, view on this whole thing power to the people <laughs> what can i say <laughs> I think uh, the interesting thing about what happened with Adani is that ek to the NDTV thing happened first right I think that was really interesting uh, that mm-hmm. you know they took over uh, NDTV uh, which is a media house and then whatever happened after that I think a lot of people also left um if you look at Adani Enterprises okay now um and and we we've done this a few times online we looked at something called delivery volume which basically tells you as Adani Enterprises was going through the roof you know doubling in price etc if you look at their uh, during this time if you look at their delivery volumes uh, it was something like 3 to 4% a day uh, to give you a benchmark a uh, good company like say uh, i don't know like a decent company i won't name a decent company but it's a decent company that people take for delivery can be as high as 60 to 75% a day now this is a far cry so that means 90 what 7% of people in the adani enterprises were trading and not actually investing uh this is a very quick way whenever you see a market very stock going up very quickly for a long time just go to nse india or google it and say delivery volumes adani enterprises or whatever you want straight up mm. you get uh, a form click on go 
and you'll be able to see the delivery volume. If it's below 50%, something is wrong. Uh, and you can see this in all the Adani stocks. This is quite uh, interesting. Uh, should not have happened. No? So. All right. No, uh, no view on the whole Hindenburg issue. Uh, I mean, from a stock perspective, right? Like people are dumping the stock um, and I don't think this is a short term thing. But who is, I, I mean, a lot of people keep asking that who is selling because 75% is owned by the promoter. Uh, mm -hmm. A large chunk is with LI is with LIC. There is such low free float. Then who is hammering these stocks? Yeah, so that's the thing, right? When there's low free free float, then uh, a small number of people can actually push it down in the short term. Uh, if you look at the volumes also, if you look at, say, a technical chart uh, of Adani, mm -hmm. for example, at enterprises, it's falling like uh, like crazy. The, pro the thing is this, right? At the end of the day, when you're paying for a stock, you're not buying the current value of the stock. Okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, the entire stock market is basically hopium, where you're thinking in the future the stock, the company is going to make a 10x difference in terms of shareholder value for all stakeholders, and therefore you're investing in the future. Therefore, we never pay book value of a stock, right? We pay multiple times the premium. Now, the moment mm. that trust gets broken, it takes a long time for it to come back. This is why I think public markets are very scary. So imagine if some of these unlisted startups were actually listed. Dude, their prices would be crazy. I mean, some of them IPO'd and we saw prices move, but uh, public markets are very different, uh, you know, Yash. I, I've been doing public markets for, what, 13, 14 years now. And as soon as trust is gone, everything's gone. Reliance Power was a very good example of 2008, where it was mm -hmm. Reliance branded. But as soon as people lost trust, of course, they found out the business also wasn't good. I would say Aam Admi should stay away from Adani in the short term because if you're not sure about the management, then, you know, there are many other stocks to pick. You should just stay away. And do you think, uh, do you think the banking sector has uh, serious risks as well because of this? Yeah, I think, uh, so we call it systemic risk, right? That uh, hmm. if the bank has too much exposure to Adani, now I don't know which banks have the most exposure. I think that that's something you may know because you had a, uh, a Twitter space on this, but if it's too large and it becomes an NPA, which I mean, the entire economy, uh, at least in terms of faith, will see like a sell off. So that that can be uh, not good. Okay, got it. You you spoke a little bit about startups, and I know another category of companies which have been getting a lot of hammering in markets is actually a lot of these new age. Uh, companies, these startups. We had uh, uh, Mama Earth also plan on doing an IPO that filed their papers with Stebby, and you know it became a whole controversy on on Twitter for the kind of valuations that they were asking for. I'm sure looking at the market conditions, all IPO plans would have been put to rest at least for the foreseeable future. But what do you think about uh, the IPO season? Is it uh, is it done and dusted for the first half of the year? Yeah, the IPO to Deco is a shit show. Like, all, all see, very simple thing, okay. I think two things everyone should should uh, generally know. One, uh, hmm. if you look at Nokri.com, which is InfoEdge, or um, any of these old companies, Infosys, etc. Even, let's take Amazon, for example. When these companies were in garages, they went IPO, all right? Uh, InfoEdge, for example, uh, had ICICI Ventures as one of, their, one of their investors, and they went IPO. Then many, many years later, they actually grew their company, right? So there was enough juice left for the public market to actually make money out of that company, right? Um, mm. Now, the private markets are so extended. Now, series A, B, Z1, ZX2 series chal <laughs> hai. <laughs> of course, I'm exaggerating for effect. <laughs> but because of that, thoda na juice utna hai nahi. So, hmm. uh, to, uh, extend ho gaya, juice hai nahi, to fit, how will the, the retail investor also wants a 5x, 3x over say x number of decades or something, right? To, wo at least hmm. opportunity to hona chahiye. So because of that, what happens is sometimes startups make bad short term decisions. For example, when you list, what you essentially want is to, you're listing in the company not to exit, but to raise money so that you can grow the company 5x, 10x from where it is right now. Correct. Mm. But some IPOs, Yash, and you probably know them, gave a complete exit. Like it was almost a hundred percent exit to their existing investors, and none of the money goes to the 
कंपनी नो दैट इज रॉन्ग यार मतलब ये मुझे ऑनेस्टली समझ नहीं आया कि इफ यू आर आईपीओ एंड एंड द मनी नन ऑफ इट गोस टू द कंपनी देन व्हाई आर यू आईपीओ सो दैट नेवर रियली मेड सेंस टू मी uh i think what they should do is they should just wait some of like mama earth is a good business yaar it's not like it's a bad business it's a good business uh i think if they could just wait for some time they would do a lot better huge respect for what the founders have built uh but maybe they should just wait a little bit uh and then go ipo uh because that will help their own company and their own valuations their own exits to be far far better i hope that makes sense all right and sticking to this whole tech and it theme uh i know it stocks ahead of the whole recession fears in west they had seen a massive massive sell off uh you know some a lot of people would argue that their valuations had also turned uh you know too expensive uh, at the peak uh, so it did deserve to get corrected uh now we are sort of seeing a bit of a pullback at least the q3 results were good uh, commentaries aren't that great but to some extent the the weakness is already uh, apparently priced in so do you do you happen to track the it space and do you like any stocks uh so actually uh, we can do a tech related thing on the budget uh, the government hmm. actually announced an artificial intelligence uh, three centers so ai for make ai in india and make ai work in india i thought that was really nice um within that they also announced ki make e courts uh, they spent they they're spending 7000 crores to make internet enabled courts online so all the smaller grievances can be managed online versus going to an actual uh, court kachari so i think that's interesting but your question yash was of the tech industry in the us and india was that the question yeah um yeah so same thing right so this story starts in covid uh, covid hmm. mein people uh, the market went down the economy ruk gaya the government uh, us government said we have no idea what to do now that's a very bad american accent <laughs> but the only thing america understands is ki bhaiya problem ho raha hai note chhap do so and see we are saying if, if, if j powell had heard this impression of his <laughs> wo abhi ke abhi 10% interest rate bada deta by the way <laughs> that's so bad <laughs> um, and they printed a lot of notes which resulted in a lot of liquidity that liquidity was accessed by right all the way from companies corporates to venture capital that flowed over here so this is that money which is printed to stimulate the economy during covid which is found its path to us now not only public markets but also um also startups now to answer your question within startups the hottest allocation that uh, liquidity gets that money gets is tech hmm. so yeah agar tech company 2000 mein create a website you could raise a few million dollars in 2022 if you had a freaking app and said 50% of my team are tech and we believe in scalability and if you throw in a couple more words you would get a few million dollars just like that <laughs> and because of that they over hired over spent and over estimated the future uh, in fact the average salary of 300000 dollars of google engineer was requested to be brought down to 200000 dollars by their own investors um, which means there's a wow. correction in salary <laughs> as well as hiring so basically to answer your question now with this context is that this is just a bubble that burst that started way at, during the time of covid and uh, this was to me at least this was expected all right but on on the charts uh, prateek technically hmm. speaking do you think that a bottom is in place because we've seen most of these companies report uh, you know better than expected results the commentaries weren't that great but uh, you know like i said they've been correcting for the past year it was the worst performing sector in 2022 so the damage you know majority of it may be already in the price a lot of experts seem to believe that you know the worst is over i know this is an exaggerated term that a lot of people in markets use but it is what it is so please deal with it um, but mm-hmm. it stocks over here are they a good are they at a good price to accumulate Yeah I think uh, why not right if you're looking at this long term I think this is a great great time to enter um I also think um basically if you look at nifty it ka index right um hmm. historically it's it it comes near this 50 moving average and then bounces up from there so if that is assumed to be the mean and the future growth of it is supposed to be as it is right now uh then there's possibly another um 
30,000 to 25,000. What is that? Another 20% fall before it uh, normalizes. So yeah, I think you could accumulate, but I think another 20% fall would be sweeter if it happens now. All right. Uh, Pratik, before I toss it back to you for anything in, else in the market that you want to talk, I just quickly uh, want to give a shout out to any one of the listeners who want to ask uh, or, you know, talk to Pratik and ask him about anything with respect to markets. You can send us in your request uh, for speaker access or you can comment on the same uh, Twitter post as well. So I'll bounce off the question to Pratik. But Pratik, anything else that is looking interesting in markets right now? Oh, you'll have to ask me more specifically. Uh, I think U.S. markets are very interesting. Uh, I, I hmm. see a lot of good, interesting stocks over there. But you can ask me any maybe Indian stock. What, what do you want to talk about? You tell me. I think I forgot to ask you about insurance. Again, this is down to what happened in the budget also with respect hmm. to uh, uh, government changing some aspects of it. So proceeds from insurance policies with more than 5 lakh rupees premium will be taxed from FY24. So that was... Uh, a major negative. A lot of companies mm. came on media and, uh, you know, they spoke about its impact. I think HDFC Life said that it would uh, amount to about 10 to 12% hit on their revenue, but not so much on their bottom line. But again, that is a negative. And we saw for the second state day, there were massive cuts across all of these insurance stocks. Any 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 thoughts on, on this space, Prati? Every time March, April happens, right? People say, what do tax do? And then their CA says, ELSS invest in insurance. Bhi kar do, and you know, you'll get some tax rebate. But uh, the new regime doesn't allow, it's not exempted. So ELSS hmm. funds, insurance funds, there's no, like, it's not exempted from tax anymore. I think that's really surprising. I feel a lot of people bought insurance and ELSS fund just because they would quote unquote save tax. Um, so I'm not sure if it's only 5%, 10% you said of HDFC life, but it sounds like it's a lot worse. I think the stock is down quite a bit. Um, so I, I, no, no, it, it, I, I, said, I said that it would hit their revenue by 10 to 12%. That is what the management said uh, to the media. Yeah, no idea what, uh, what the impact yeah. would have, but even 10% is pretty significant. My yes. guess is it's, it's low, but yeah, it, it's higher than 10%, but I'm sure... Um, yeah, it, it prob- it's probably higher than 10%, but it's a guess. <laughs> Got it. So do you think uh, there's more pain for these insurance stocks or, uh, you know, I know they've been underperforming for the longest period of time. Mala, pura market, it, uh, you know, post COVID itna chal gaya and a lot of these insurance stocks could barely move about their pre COVID highs. So relatively speaking, they were weak, but are they at, you know, levels where there is long-term support. Can someone look to buy them over here or is it just complete avoid? Yeah, I'll be honest, man. I, I don't know. I, I honestly have no clue. Um, I, especially insurance. Yeah, I have no clue. I, I don't understand the business that well. Got it. No worries. You wanted to talk about US stocks, na? Um, yeah, we can. Uh, I'll have to open the stocks up though. <laughs> Um, okay, so I, I think uh, basically what we're saying is that the falls in uh, the US are much, much higher. Uh, so a lot of stocks like uh, Netflix, uh, Meta have fallen a lot. Uh, I think the pain of Meta is not over. Uh, a lot of really good companies, right? So, okay, I have this list, you know, I, I should read the list out to you. So there's this list of nice, decent companies. Um, and I'll just read the list if that's okay, guys. Uh, yeah. this list of companies that I'm tracking, okay, uh, and maybe if anything, you can just track it with me. So, and and this was done last week, so it's it's pretty recent. Let me see. Here it is. Okay, so here are the American stocks that I thought were interesting. So, Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon, Nike. I'll say it again: Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon, Nike, Salesforce, Union Pacific. Uh, these are some of the companies that are actually at very interesting places and have not been this low for more than a decade. Um, so if you want to start your analysis of companies, I'd say start with analyzing these guys. Um, there are also slightly higher risk ones like Salesforce, Intuit, um, Moody's. These are slightly higher, more risk, but you should definitely check them out. Uh, and I thought 
their fundamentals were good technically they were also interesting you should definitely check these companies out i'm not saying buy them i just say they're at interesting price levels uh not seen before for more than 10 years so i thought if you have time this weekend check these stocks out and you know maybe post on stock tweets to yash and comment on whether you think it's a bad stock or a good stock since you brought this topic up uh, pratik actually wasn't there some uh change in the budget with respect to overseas investing like i think there was an increase in tds um from 5% to 20% something i read i can't really recall exactly in case you remember no, i'm in the same boat no nope, i'm in the same boat i don't remember if someone if someone can comment and tell us that'd be nice that's a good question all right <laughs> now mind so we've got a couple of questions uh, pratik webhav vajpai wants to know your your view on metal stocks he's curious will metal stocks go up because uh, because of china reopening play and what is the future for for them very kitne smart log hain so i think first thing is see metal etc are cyclic industries so uh, hmm. unless your allocation is very very low webhav uh i don't think you should look at metal stocks like that because they're all cyclic you understand cyclic ki wo kisi time pe upar jaate then they come back down and kisi time pe upar jaate so if you look at the uh, nifty metal index it started at 3600 2012 it's at 6000 in 2024 at uh, sorry 2023 so it's not moved much right it's sideways so i would say generally why do you want to look at metals yeah uh, because you cannot be in it long term um so yeah i would say just stay away from the sector itself why don't you look at other nicer ones like fmcg and it and banking and all the usual suspects i hope webo is hearing that uh we got one more uh, question uh, pratik this one is from uh yeah this one is from maratha in stocks he wants to know your uh, your thoughts on railway stocks uh he's unhappy that the railway stocks are going down despite uh you know the increase in allocation in the budget i think it was at an all time high 2.94 lakh crores but uh, railway stocks uh, didn't seem to take it too nicely maybe it's just down to the whole adani hindenburg market weakness but uh, are railway psu stocks something that you like yeah so one i don't track them in my understanding of railways as a this thing is is very low so i'm sorry i don't want to give you wrong uh, opinions on something uh but generally speaking na uh, you should not make decisions based on what you see in the budget um because you see the budget will change every year but your investments are there for decades um so you should just look at three things when you're looking at an investment one if you don't have time just buy an index fund uh two if you do have time learn a investing strategy um there are lots of places you can learn investing strategies from but basically you want three things uh to be there one you want momentum in the stock over monthly charts long term two you want decently high roe in the company um and three you want low debt in infrastructure stocks like say railways these numbers will not be good therefore i don't track them as well so i hope i answered both questions what you should look at and why i don't track um the uh, railway kind of stocks pradeep you said that if uh you know you you want to buy just buy nifty um generally speaking a lot of experts think that 2023 will be a challenging year for equities in that case if someone today wants to build a portfolio they have a few lakh rupees on the side what would be your ideal asset allocation uh, how much percent will go to equities uh, mutual funds what would be the proportion like i think you should keep it simple right i think uh, so how much should your investable capital so i'm assuming you mm-hmm. have an emergency fund you have your insurance etc in space even if you're not getting tax rebates please buy insurance guys <laughs> um <laughs> and then you have some investable money left well if you don't have time i just think uh and if you're young assuming you're young i think everything should go to equity but i'm very aggressive uh i think everything should go to equity because you have an emergency fund in place etc uh maybe 10% of it can be put into some kind of debt uh but if you say like a 40 something year old and your son slash daughter is going to uh study abroad sometime soon uh then you'd probably do something like 70% equity 60% equity and rest debt see two things you should always remember over a seven year period even if you invested in 2008 ka crash at the top you still made money i'll say it again 
even at the top, if you invested 2008 and the market crashed after seven years, you still made money. So why do you want to take tension whether 2003 is 2023 is going to be good or bad? If you're in it for like at least seven years, you should still be okay. You shouldn't take so much tension. Life is short. Does that make sense, Yash? Hundred <laughs> percent. But I'm. I just have one more question. You said sixty percent or so to equity and rest in debt, but you did not mention gold anywhere. And gold is making all sorts of moves these days. So, firstly, why no gold? And secondly, if yes, then what do you think about gold prices right now? Gold, go to dekho, boy. I have never understood gold. Gold, if you look at the chart, it's flat. Okay. Um, I can make more money building a new D2C brand, drop shipping on Amazon. So please, like, <laughs> I don't know. Like gold, I have never understood gold. Uh, I think uh, you can keep it to like, I don't know. To me, I would never invest in gold. Why would you put money in something that doesn't appreciate consistently over a long period of time? And gold does not. If you don't believe me, please go and see a 20-year chart of gold and tell me where you see the price appreciation. In the short term, it may go up, uh, and something may happen to it, and you may think it's interesting. But that doesn't make the asset interesting, right? You need to see the asset over a decade car period because we can't predict short-term moves. So, to me personally, I don't believe in touching gold. But yeah, a lot of my friends invest in it. Uh, people think it's a cushion, and people put money there. So, uh, you know, makes sense for them. But मेरे को समझ नहीं आया कभी. All right, we'll wrap up uh, today's uh, session over here. Pratik, any any closing remarks? No man, thank you, you so much, Yash. And you <laughs> didn't make this uh, very uh, formal. This was a lot of fun. अगर आप लोगों को पसंद आया तो please करो. Shout out to Saket over there, looking fancy. I just met him in Calcutta. <laughs> so hi Saket, but thank you so much for having me, uh, Yash. And um, I'll see you again soon. Awesome. That's all for this uh, spaces edition, guys. Uh, once again, thank you, Pratik and Lona, for agreeing to do this. And uh, it was obviously filled with lots of learnings. We spoke about budget, markets, and so many other things. So, in case you guys joined late, this uh, spaces session is getting recorded and will be the first pinned post on our Twitter handle. So, do go ahead and check it out. And while you're there, do not forget to sign up to our daily Rep India newsletter. It's completely free. It hits your inbox every day in the evening by five thirty. I'm your host Yashubadeh. See you again next week. Take care and peace.